A key skill in backgammon is knowing how to use the doubling cube. This cube can mean you lose two or four points or maybe even the whole match on a single game. And when you've got the cube coming at you, do you have the strength of will to stay there and continue playing for double stakes? Or do you give in and let your opponent win a single point? In the position from the third round, Peter Bennett doubled Martin Burkhand from Germany. Let's have a look at this position. Paul, can you tell me what the right position, the right move is here? Okay, the right move at this score is for, uh, is for white on the bar to double and black should pass. And one thing that makes the doubling cube so very difficult is that it depends on the score. Every time you get to a different score, it's a whole new ball game. And the score that we're most familiar with is what we call the money score, or it's a score where you're tied at the very beginning of a long match. And in this kind of a score, this position is a, is a strong double and also a very easy take. Because white is on the bar, and white is gonna stay on the bar, White has uh, 16 numbers out of 36 that, uh, that stay on the bar, and that's 44% of the time. And when that happens, then, uh, then black is a strong favorite. But the flip side of this is that white has 16 numbers that enter and hit. White can hit with any four with double deuces with two one and also with two six. And double fours is a super joker because uh, it, uh, it hits two numbers and makes a strong point. And so anytime white rolls one of these 16 numbers, He's, uh, he's threatening not only to win the game, but to win a gammon. And in fact, white does win a gammon 25% of the time, and when that happens, then black loses the match. And so this position, even though it's a very easy take for money, it's a huge monster pass at the score. Um, so just to clarify, what you're saying is that um, if you were just playing for kind of an infinite number of points, right. um, Black can take it because he's got good winning chances. That's right. It's a very comfortable take. But at this score, you pay a really huge price for losing a gammon. A gammon is much more costly at this score than it is in a normal money situation. And, uh, and Black loses 25%, uh, gammon 25% of the time, and that's just too much. And so Black should give this one up definitely. Okay, and it's because um, Peter here is four points away, so with a doubled cube and then the double win from the gammon, the four points take him to win the match. Yes, it takes him very efficiently to win the match, from three to seven. Great, let's go and find out what Martin did in the match. Guys, tell me what happened in your match. Well, the first leg, um, seven point match, was very close, went to double match point. And we were both, both of us big favorites at different times, but I was lucky and just, just took it. But then I ran away with the second and, and hammered Martin. He, he, he looked like he was winning some games, but he didn't actually win any, so he lost seven nil. Um, so uh, it was a relatively easy ride for me as it happens, but it didn't feel like it. So you gave him no quarter? No, no, I didn't. The first set was very close and, well, I, at times I thought I had him, but he escaped somehow. And in the second set, I had no chance at all, I thought. So I'm feeling very happy, obviously. Well, congratulations, Thank Peter, you. and commiserations, Martin. Um, can you just tell me a bit about this position you've got set up here? Martin was kind of, kind of ahead of me most of the way in the first set, and it, in this position he was leading 5-3 to 7. Um, but he has, he has three men on my three-point, but I'm on the bar, and he's threatening to make a five-point board, but I'm on roll. And um, I don't know whether I would double this in a, like at the beginning of the match or for money, but at this score, if I double and I get lucky and hit and I pick up a few blocks, I can win a gammon quite easily. And if I've doubled, that will win me the match. Whereas I can't lose a gammon if I've doubled. Um, so there's a big incentive to double in a, in a gammonish position. And so you did and double? So I did double. When Peter gave you that cube, did you, did you agree with it? Was it what you would have done? Uh, yes, I think so. I'm not sure whether it was a take, actually. Uh, at the score? He had, yes, at the score. Uh, he had 16 hits, which is nearly 50%. 
and if he hits any of my men, then I'm in great gammon danger. Um, so I'm not sure whether my take was correct. Um, so, Peter goes through, Martin goes out. Before we get to the top two moments of the London Open, we took some time out with Carter Matic, an American in London. The CCTV has picked up another American. Who am I? I'm Carter Matic. I'm a player from uh, the US, Chicago. And I'm here for the London Open in a points race for the w, for the World Backgammon Tour. Well, home is always my favorite city, Chicago. But uh, London and Copenhagen are my two favorite cities to play backgammon outside of there. See, I like trashy postcards. They don't have any trashy postcards. There's a couple chouettes in London and in uh, Copenhagen that are just really fun. Lots of action, lots of big stakes. Ah, uh, the scenic London beach. Tides come out. Huh? The Queen Mum? Or no, the Queen. Not the Queen Mum. Jesus. Uh, on points, I'm doing great. I just knocked out uh, Falafel, who's the number two giant. So, that's nice. Lady Die, we still miss her. I love, well, the weather's been utter crap, but uh, I love London. And uh, I love the people here, and they feel, make me feel very welcome. So, I'm having a good time. And since I jumped up in the points race, I'm really happy. I love, I love to travel. My wife enjoys traveling as well. Uh, you know, you get to see, I have friends in every country now, and so it's really nice to see people. <laughs> Throw a coin, make a wish. <laughs> hey, I'm a good shot. If I was to start out an illustrious career of backgammon like myself, uh, I would start with the low stakes money games, try and work your way to where you're comfortable. I mean, Losing money is an easy method of figuring out how good you are. And uh, I would just start playing in the little tournaments, intermediates, move up to championship when you feel comfortable. Well, I'd start just by having fun. I mean, the whole thing is, is so many people look at moves and look at plays and they're, oh my god, it's point two error. And this weekend, I know why I got knocked out. But uh, enjoy it, just have fun with it. The next destination, hopefully it's gonna be Paris. And that's for the final. So I'm pretty excited. <laughs> yeah, I can ramble on for days. And now we're down to the top two moments of the London Open 2010. I can tell you now that our last moment is from the final and we'll let you know then who the finalists were and who the winner was of the London Open 2010.